Let's make a hobbit hole! to another terrain making video. Uh, in this one, my cat helping me, uh, we're going to make a hobbit hole. Um, I forgot the Scour and the Shire um, guide. There is an actual uh, guide book, there is a guide in it that which shows you how to make a hobbit hole and so you may be wondering well, what's the point in this video, just follow that guide, but there's always different techniques and different materials you can use. I mean, the material that's used for the substructure in this is extruded foam, which is great, it's great material. But it's really expensive, and I just don't see the point in it. It doesn't offer any benefit than a white polystyrene, which is cheap, and uh, so that's what we're going to use. So down here, I've got this massive block here of polystyrene, uh, white polystyrene. Uh, there'll be a link in the description for this. I mean, this whole thing was like 15 quid, and this is going to make three or four hobbit holes and a load of future other future projects. Um, so, you know. Why are you saving your money? Uh, we're going to use the Forge World Hobby um, Hobbit front and Tom Aurelian stuff, which we got reviews of on the channel, so you can have a look at that. And I might have a little look at making my own front, just in case you don't want to buy anything in. Um, yeah, so uh, let's move the cat and get. Do you want to be moved and get making, get creating, crafting, get. Hobby Hobbiting or something. Uh, let's get making. Um, difficulty wise, uh, yeah, I reckon give it a two. Don't be that difficult, really. Might be a one, really, but we'll give it a two. Just because we got to make, um, got to do some carving, some filling. Some, there's a lot of different techniques just to get that curvature, natural curvature of the heel, and a lot of flocking. I haven't done much flocking on the channel, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so let's go. You ready, cat? He, 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 he's kind of ready. He's we're gonna have to build around the cat. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is draw out our basic shape. I'm not gonna be measuring anything, so there's no need for a ruler uh, in this video. So see that rule. Um, but there are going to be a few things that are going to govern the overall size. One is we're using, for this one, we're using the facade of the Forge World piece. And two, I'm going to be basing it on this 3mm chipboard, uh, which the sheets I use, are, get it all in, are a inch, uh, 12 inches by 12 inch square. So that is going to govern the sort of maximum size we're going to get. But I don't think we need it that big anyway. So what I'm going to first do is just put. Put it on the sort of bottom layer of our phone, and I'm just gonna draw around it. And as long as I'm inside this red line here, I'm I'm all good. I'm good. So uh, I can just there we go. Get the camera out of the way. I am good. As long as I'm in this red line, this camera is really drunk. There we go, it's a bit better. And so yeah, and what I'm gonna do is just put it on here. And I know in that case, I'm gonna to wanna to draw, still gotta tidy up the edges here, but I know roughly the sort of size it's gonna be. And I guess I'm gonna make it a similar shape and style to the one that's in the book. So if you look at the one that's in the scale in the Shire, I'll take the terrain on it. Sort of looks something like that. So we've got a couple of M bits here. It's going to look to sort of emulate that. So looking at there's there, they've got a fairly wide bit here on this side and a short, short bit here. So I'm going to put it about there. And I think for this one, 
I'm going to go that side with it, I decided. Because I'm going to buy another one, I've got plans for this side, so I like quite a lot of So I'm going to put it there. I think that's, that's going to look alright. So I'm just going to put some mark there, mark there, and I'll probably come, come in a bit, might even come out wide and make it a bit more natural. Get unnatural. So come in. As I say, it's all just eyeballs in it. So I'm gonna do it's probably come in so it's got a little bit there. And cut that out and so it will probably sit somewhere there. So we've got a pavement at the front. Uh yeah, so it's all gonna be just like, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just work out a rough sort of shape for it. I actually want to cut out there. There we go. And it's all just a bit of trial and error really to see what you like. Right. No, so I didn't need to rule. Rule, come back, I need you. No I don't. I don't do it like that. So yeah, this bit here will be cut out. Curve it here. What I'll probably end up with is something like that, I guess. It's gonna be my main shape. Uh, and then I'm gonna look a bit wider. A bit more back on it. I'm going to cut this out and then each subsequent, I'm going to probably do it three layers wide or tall I think. And again, I don't want it too high, so it's going to be about three inches high in total. So I'm going to cut out pretty much three of these and stick them together. I might actually come in now and make this one slightly smaller, but we'll see. Anyway, so I'm going to cut these out. So the first layer is cut out using the hot wire cutter and so that will just sit in there. It's not that tight yet so I've got to cut those out so it doesn't quite fit in but it will. And so it fit in like that. So what I'm going to do now is just cut out another layer by getting this bit of foam, drawing around it and cutting it out just using the hot wire cutter. Well, this is going to be awkward to show you of a big cat in the way. Anyway, I've got three bits cut, all pretty much the same size. And what I'm going to do now is attempt to move <laughs> my cat, who's now attacking the microphone, uh, and we're going to just glue them. Um, so, I'm just going to use PVA. Uh, here, I'm going to go right up to the front. I'm going to need a lot. I might need to go towards the edges on the outside here. Just around the doorway, I'll make sure I go more up to the edges here. Because we're going to be, once it's dry, we're going to be trimming it anyway. What you're going to want to do is do three pieces and then put something heavy on top to hold it down. Hopefully, you can hear that. Probably all you can hear is my cat. But oh. on. One layer. Once it's dry, we are just going to be trimming it with the hot wire car and angling it and doing all sorts of other cool things. So, similar story here. Not too worried about going around the edge, outer edge here, because we're going to be angling it off, kind of thing. Stick that on. Probably do a better job of sticking it on. <laughs> Stick it on so it's uh, matching at least. And there you go. What I'm going to do is put some books on top. Uh, now, 
on the GW one, it looks like this is actually embedded. What I'm going to do is just going to stick it to the front here, and I'm just going to build up with a bit of foam, sort of the outer bit here, once it's stuck on. So I'll do that once this is dried, though. Just to give you a heads up on what I'm, my plans are. So. <laughs> Maybe a few others. Let's get battle companies on there as well. Cool. Leave that to dry. So next up, we're going to uh, sort of bevel the edges a bit. Hot wire car, angle wire ever so slightly and we're going to do it in sort of increments so i'm going to just roughly gauge it like that i think i'll just come around i'm going to do it in in sort of stages small stages at a time so I'm just trying to show you a bit at a time just to see so you'll be not doing it on camera so you can take your time more. Just try and show you the technique. As you can see it's got a bit of a curve going on now. So I'm just going to carry on with that until I've done all around the edge. I mean, here I'm going to leave as is, and I'll come back when I've sort of shaped it a bit. And this is it, sort of all carved and shaped, in its basic shape. Minimal mess, even though it's white foam with a hot wire cutter. And that's its basic shape done. I've uh, still got to glue this on and add some more polystyrene over here to shape that bit. I've curved this enough so a window can be stuck here at the correct angle, and likewise on the side here. So that's nice, and I've got to plan out my chimneys, which I sh they should not come out. I think one's going to go here. All I'm going to do if they're not at the right angle is just dig them in a little bit, because it's polystyrene, it will dig in. So that's it. I'm going to now get this stuck to a base, because I want to get the uh, paving done, and the front stuck in, and this bit put in. So I'm going to work on that next. So for this one, I'm going to make it slightly smaller. I'm going to use this uh, one here because I think it looks like quite quaint, like a gardener, maybe for the gaffers. So what I'm going to do for this one is going to be perfectly flat uh, frontage, and this is going to be recessed into here. So what I've done is drawn around where it's going to go, and I'm just going to cut out enough to fit this in. So uh, that is. So I'll try and cut in here. It's not going to be that accurate because it's curved, and I don't think I'll be able to do that with the hot wire card. But it's just going to be a case of I'm going to come in. Very really difficult to get a curve in. I'll see what I can do. And come in. What's that for now? Take a little slice out. this okay. and I just try and angle it like that so that's going to end up looking like that a bit of a gap here but I'm going to fill that in later on just going to do this to the other one now and then glue them together as normal so what I've done now is I've gone around and sort of marked out where I want the sort of details to go and I've just drawn around it and I'm just with a knife going to go score around it and then 
the score down and I'm just going to try and remove a bit of polystyrene from here so it just recesses in a little bit. Probably going to get a bit messy, might have to scrape away some of this white stuff but not too deep. I think that'll do. So then this just recesses in a bit better rather than it sort of just floating around on the top. So I'm just going to do that to the other chimney piece. Uh, the windows don't need to, they can just fit on like so. And I'm just then going to glue these in place. But before we do the uh, gluing of the uh, details, we're just going to get some mob rock over it in places just to give it some protection and cover up all these bits here. Uh, mob rock's just plaster on a roll, used it loads of times on the channel. That's going to cut little bits in strips soak it in water for a few seconds and then pull it out and I'm going to glue it on uh, stick it on just like so and just go in just rub him like so and it just covers up all the gaps and so forth and you just sort of carry on working bit by bit building layers up until you're happy and I shall crack on now. You can also get in here where there's a gap I've joined. It's, the mug rock's gone off, it's dried, and it's now, well, solid as a rock. Beep, 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 boom, boom, solid. Uh, I apologise for that. Um, yeah, so I, I think I mentioned in the segment before that it's like an optional stage, which it is. I would highly recommend doing it because uh, war game terrain, you know, it, it's take it has a lot of play and you want it to be as hardy as possible and that's what this would do if you've got a foam substructure you're going to want to protect it and um, which i've done here but it's also useful to fill in gaps and so forth like around the edge here and so now we're going to go on to the uh, next stage which is basing it i'm going to get some uh, three mil chipboard stick it on and just draw around it uh, Put it on, get it on, draw around it, and then just pay attention to this bit. Put a line along here as well, just so you know where to put the glue. And then we're going to cut it out using a knife. So I'm going to draw around it now. There you go. There you go. And get a knife. And just uh, don't cut this bit here. You want to leave this bit here. Because this is going to be the patio. And when it comes to cutting chipboard, you're going to want to do it in two, three, or even four passes of the knife quite thick and hardy stuff and there it is cut out and that fits on um, now all we're gonna do is get some glue and stick it around the uh, the base area but not on the patio bit make sure you get good splodge around the edges Give it a good covering and we'll glue it on.
like so. Um, now we're going to do the patio. On the one in the uh, Scour and Shire book, they use foam, like uh, six mil foam. But the problem with that is it, it's quite thick. And, you know, by the time you've got your model in there, that's going to be a massive step for a uh, hopper to get up. But you don't have to... Because we've got it on this chipboard, you can actually just engrave into it anyway with a ballpoint pen. So all you're going to do is just come along and just draw a rough sort of crazy paving patio pattern in there just out of odd angled shapes, triangles and sort of, uh, not squares necessarily, rhombuses I guess. And just, I don't know if you can see, it's just coming in here. Just, and when you're happy with the actual design, just come in and go over it a few times, scoring into the uh, chipboard and you'll have the same effect, you'll have an engraved patio design. So I'm just going to now carry on and do the rest of this. Like so. Oh, my hand hurts. All right. We can now get onto the exciting stage, which is painting and flocking this. I mean, the actual building work's done. So we're going to make some chimneys for the other hobbit holes that, were, that aren't using the forge world pieces. For this, we're going to take some 10mm foam, just one of the uh, chimney pieces, and just draw around it like so, ignoring the uh, the ridges and do the same for the bigger piece. Put this somewhere like that. That'll do. Draw around. It only has to be rough. Let's get the basic idea of this shape. Like that. And then cut these out using a hot wire cutter. Once you cut them out, just get a pen. And all you can do is just we've seen it done before. Just score a brick patterning like so, and take some uh, three mil card uh, chipboard, cut out a little square and glue it on the top here, like so, and do the same for the other piece, and allow that to dry, and then we'll stick something on for the uh, chimneys, the actual chimney pots. So I've got all the undercoat down, so what's green part of it's green, uh, which is this Acrylic green that's called uh, Green Earth. It's this, and it's just black for the uh, rest of it. Uh, the plan is now to paint uh, the rest. So I'm going to paint this shades of grey. Uh, my plan is to use three types of grey. Uh, it's going to be Based in that one, dry brushed in that, and then dry brushed in that. Um, and now I'll probably put various washes on. And the red bricks, I'm probably gonna paint that first for the mortar, and then it drops sort off. Of go over the bricks probably in a dry brush with that that'll give a nice red brick look uh, the tiles here the shingle tiles probably the dark and mid grey I did that in uh, the wood is going to be rhinox hide dry brushed with carrick stone doors probably going to paint, probably paint this one green and so I'll probably do all this terracotta as well like red brick tile red brick tile that'll be wood there chimney's all going to be red so that's what I'm going to do I probably won't do a video of me painting unless there's something interesting but that's the colours I'm going to use if you're interested we'll probably go over it again once I've painted it the uh, painting's now complete um, one thing I did change my mind on was the um, uh, mortar colour I use, I think I said I was going to use Zemzy Dust, but I decided to use uh, Talon Sand, which is slightly less yellow. 
I think it came out rather well. It kind of looks like red bricks with mortar in between, as you can see there. Uh, the rest of the colour is pretty much what I said. Um, added a few brown and green washes on the cobblestones here. And someone did turn their phone off when I'm recording. Let's move that away. Sorry about that, if you heard that. If not, you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about. But anyway, my phone was right by the uh, microphone. Bad, bad Kevin. Anyway, um, yeah, the door is painted green, uh, Caliban green, Dark Angels green in old money. And I've done some, just some weathering. Some, so the wood is my standard Rhinox hide dry brushed with uh, Carrick stone. Uh, and in this case I went really heavy with it because I want it to be really weathered and then the Carrick stone is just on everywhere else as well. Um, in places I went extra heavy with the Carrick stone sort of here and this step here and then this here I did a wash, made my own sort of wash out of, um, I don't know what it is in new paint names but it's just camo green so it's that kind of green so it's really watered down and went over that um, and that is it and again whether in the bottom whoop, get my fingers placed, whether in the bottom part of the uh, the doorway there that was done using a uh, still leaking drab and then at the bottom towards more towards the bottom uh, carrot stone again uh, yeah so I'm really quite pleased with that um sort of see see that there window there what I'm gonna do for the windows at the moment uh, it's just what I remember I've just left them black because when you look into windows they kind of look black but what I'm going to do when I've totally finished and all the flocking's done I don't want any flocking stuck on it is I'm going to get some really high gloss varnish and just paint over the black bits so it looks so there's a bit of a reflection there I'll do that later on uh, now we're going to get on to the uh, fun part so uh, and that's the uh, flocking because it looks a bit ooh, at the moment so to begin with I'm going to add some tufts over this bit here and then some random tufts around. For this, I'm using Warpainter.net tufts. Uh, these ones here, these are called uh, green grass. Um, they come on sticky back, sort of a uh, sticky back in, so you can actually stick them directly on. That's okay, but I'm still going to use some uh, PVA glue just to glue them in place. So I'm going to get on with that and stick stick some tufts on now. Uh, here it all is tough. There's many tufts I want to put on. Do you want to go overboard yet? Loads more flocking stages to go. Next up, I want to get some clump foliage around the chimneys and around the joints here, just to hide things like that, really. Uh, for this, I'm going to use lots of just different colours of clump foliage. Maybe some olive green here, light green, mid green, and a dark green, and some glue. I'm not going to be scientific about it, just going to get some clump foliage, whack it on with some glue and that's pretty much it. Different colours, different places, uh, I might even just paint the glue on around and uh, get it whacked in kind of thing. The clump flock foliage stage is done, so it's now all around the chimneys and the windows and just in random places on the actual, mainly towards the top of, uh, of it. And what we're going to do now, put it on one side, uh, my cat's going to get involved as usual. We are going to do the uh, coarse turf stage. And with this, I'm just using various different, brilliant with various different green blends. Uh, so we're gonna use this medium green and then these sort of wash, more washed out greens. Uh, but 
I'm not going to apply them separate. I'm going to make a sort of mix up. So I'm going to show you a little bit at a time. Just put a bit in here. Some of that. There's no science to this. It's just however you want it. Some of that. I think these are both the same actually. And just give it a, a sort of mix. I think you get this sort of uh, mixture of colours. And I'm just going to apply that on there. Probably put a bit more green in there. A bit more of that. Picture that. Oh, I feel like a some sort of chef brewing up a yeah, some sort of ingredient, some sort of nice thing. But anyway, that's what what, what I'm going with. And uh, these to one side for now, so my cat can knock them over. Now, I think all I'm going to do to apply them is I'm going to do it in working smaller patches, I guess. Yeah, let's just put some glue where I want it. Roughly. Get a paintbrush and some water just to just to s help spreading the paint out of and then I'm just gonna pretty much just uh, sprinkle it on. Like so. it down free up the turf there and yeah pat it down let that dry and we're gonna shake off the excess so I'm gonna just not do that all over just in various places probably around the top more around the top that's a patch here patch around the back here perhaps underneath the window seals and so forth that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna carry on so we'll go in with that now. Coarse foliage layer is done. Uh, next up is actual main bit of the flock. So this is going to be made up, made my own sort of green mixture here. Um, it's made up of, I wanted some static grass in there. So I'm using some of this uh, burnt grass, static grass, which is kind of a fairly gray. I've got this um, green grass, which is a fine turf. At the same time, I'm using some of this uh, green blend. So this has bits of yellow, bits of dark, bits of white in there. It's all mixed up to get give this sort of fairly dark green. I probably might. I don't know. I might try and add, add some of this uh, Jarvis light meadow grass in there. I think just a. This is uh, sawdust. So I don't want to mix too much of this up. I do want to just get some light patches in there. I quite like that. It all looks like little little flowers. I don't want to go too much. And mix it in. Just mix it in hand again. A bit like the coarse flock mix. There's no, no right or wrong way of doing this. It's just whatever you fancy, whatever you think looks good. Okay, and it's just me the same thing. I'm going to do it in patches again. Um, so let's do let's do the top part here. I mean this bit here. So this glue. Come okay, go. And all we're gonna do is sprinkle it on. Already, I can see that's looking great. And this just saves doing multiple passes of stack and sawdust and clump uh, um what's it called oh, i forget what to make the other one is the woodland scenic stuff is rubber i think it is something like that yeah um and head down shake it off 
And you get something that looks like that. And I'm gonna carry on and do the rest. I'm happy with that colour. It's kind of very natural beforehand and looking at others. It's they go a bit too light for me. I want a very lawn green and I'm happy with that. And as I said, it just saves doing multiple passes and I should point out that it's two mil static grass that uh, from Woodland Scenics I'm using. Okay, we are on the home stretch now. Uh, pretty much all the flocking's done. Uh, there will be patches, probably you'll notice where the green paint comes through, but you can put bits of clump on there just to hide it. Um, but what I want to do now is just finish off the patio area. I want to get some to here. Just see, I want to get some clump foliage and put on here and here as kind of sort of bushes are going to go here, something like this. I don't want to do too much where it hides up all the detail in the house of course, but just enough to add a bit of interest. Uh, get some leftover uh, tufts I'm going to put here and here as um, plant, um, sort of plants are here and then in the cracks of the crazy pavement I'm going to put little strips of glue and add some uh, static grass, pretty much like I did with the path video. So I'm going to crack on with this now. And I'll... So that's what I mean by the bushes. Uh, paint's paint, blue's a bit wet here, so that's what the white sponges are, but that will dry translucent. Next, I get some tufts of grass, and just got four left. I might as well use them uh, just to. Just to glue on places, so I <laughs> where I actually put the glue. And so I want to kind of plant here, plant there, plant there, and plant there. And so I'm just going to stick these on. So, and finally, all I'm going to do is get some paint around here. Add some um, static grass in there, so a bit of paint on my uh, pink McDoobie. Get some water, water that down. Just that, it's gonna add some paint around the cracks. Maybe not too much where the main walkway is, I imagine. Walk off them. Cool. I'm coming with some static grass and uh, dab it on like so, all over where I want it. And let that dry, and then we'll sh shake off any excess. Hopefully, it shouldn't take too long. Hopefully, you can see what I'm trying to achieve there. So, it looks like a bit of bit of moss and weeds are sort of growing out. Um, it looks a bit over the top now because I haven't shaken it out, but it will, once you shake it out, it won't be as much as this. So I'll try and do it in a minute, actually. I think so. Looks a bit better. Like that. And that is pretty much it done. Uh, I'm going to hopefully let this glue dry for a few hours and then We'll come back and see what it looks like. Actually, one last thing. I need some uh, skull white, and this is great if you don't have flower um, tufts. And you just get some white on a brush and just dab it onto the top so it looks like plants. Oh, it's got flowers on. Like so. So now. The tufts. 
a little plant adds a bit of colour to it and this is it complete all the clues dried now uh, see all the, uh, the foliage work there let's spin it around over there assuming so that looks at the back quite plain I may some patches here just sitting on camera I may just go around and touch those in particularly there but it's not, not a major problem so I painted it green underneath uh, got a chimney there coming through quite like that this window here yeah and I like that that's quite nice nice and solid when it's got mod rock on it but as we've been going along you've seen been making other ones while I've been doing the main one as well here's one with the Tom Marillion frontage in similar sort of style as the other one blue door I really like that I actually really like the frontage just nice traditional hobbit door uh, homemade chimney here you can sort of see it here like that same sort of shape and design as the one we've just looked at but here we've got the uh, sort of dormer window that is grass on this one rather than tiled sticking out with wood in front and I actually really like that I think that looks really cool really pleased with that there's that one and we've got the the gardener's house little which is a smaller one and this one you can see instantly just full of colour one because of this lovely flower on here it's coloured and then his garden just full of flowers I figured he's going to be a gardener a little tree on top so I just drew it a little with a pink glass little hole in there and got a little that's a I think it's an engage tree actually but engaged railway trees it's quite small but perfect for this source top of a hobbit hole so yeah I actually really like this one the uh, big chimney at the front here it's just a small fairly understated house this one compared to the others so if we see this one here this one is that big compared to it it's not mega small but just slightly smaller but yeah that's what this one looks like and this is probably my favorite I'll actually like the frontage love the frontage on that the doors smaller I'll put this in that in the review I did other things you got that it's nice but yeah so that is the hobbit holes are all done so that's it for this video thanks for watching and till next time take care